Coming up on this episode, we're going to be talking about Blizzard charging you $30 for the new D3 expansion pack. Is Rockstar Games stealing music? One rapper thinks so. And I have a hands-on video of the brand new Steam controller. All of that on this brand new solo edition of GamerTech.tv. This episode of GT Live is brought to you by Personas. Personas makes some of the highest quality gear around, like mixers, preamplifiers, monitors, controllers, signal processors, and even software. For more information, please visit personas.com today. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of GT Live. I'm Jace Rossi. This is the internet broadcast that is focused on the technology that powers our favorite video games. Plus, we review some cool gadgets and gears along the way. Hopefully, some interviews soon. Now, if you notice in the, in the promo, I mentioned that this is a solo edition. Annie is not with me, and I am doing this all by myself. So I apologize on how this comes out. Just saying right there. She's not here. She's actually on assignment. She'll be back next episode. But I'm going to take over and do the whole show myself, so this should be really fun. Uh, a couple of things before we get started. I want to apologize for Unlocked not airing this week. Uh, we were waiting for some internet things. We are switching our internet around to get some higher upload speeds. Uh, you know, upload's important for us internet broadcasters. Uh, so next week it will be returning. But, you know, since she is gone, you know, I could have just postponed this episode. I didn't want to do that. So you get me. Yay. Hopefully I don't mess this up too bad. Uh, so yes, Unlocked will be back next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, starting at 8 p.m. Uh, standard time. We also have some reviews coming up next episode from Logitech. Uh, they're awesome enough to send us some cool stuff. We actually have a lot of review stuff in. We actually have some stuff from Apivia, Raid Max, and Win. Of course, Logitech. Uh, we got some other stuff coming in from PNY. Mushkin, you know, EVGA, all kinds of stuff. So stay tuned to any of the coming, uh, the upcoming episodes for those cool reviews. And plus, we'll have them posted on the website so you can view them if you don't want to watch the episode. But who doesn't want to watch the episode? you got to watch the whole episode. But if you don't, it'll be on our YouTube channel, Daily Motion, and on the website. So let's go ahead and get started into the first story. Um, this is kind of funny because if you know me at all, I'm a big music person. Uh, I have lots of musical equipment. I've played for years. Uh, apparently, a rapper. Let me look. Let me look up uh, his name here because th this story just was just so funny to me. Uh, apparently, a rapper, and he. This is the messed up part. His name is Daz Dillinger, and I don't know who he is. I've never heard of him, but apparently, he is saying that GTA Five and Rockstar Games stole two songs of his and used them without his permission. And now he wants every unsold copy of GTA 5 destroyed, which is ridiculous. Rockstar is not going to do this. Here's the here's the kicker is he's saying that he stole two of his songs. And this has happened before. Um, I, I've heard of things like Fox and Glee uh, on the TV show, you know, stealing music or not getting copyrights. Uh, some people have said that Weird Al steals stuff, but it, it's not true. What this guy needs to realize is he only produced the songs. He actually didn't write anything. He was just the producer for the songs. And I guarantee you, and it even says that he was offered $4,271 for the songs. He was just the producer. The record label has the rights to the songs. Okay. Not him. I'm sure he has a writing credit or like a producing credit or anything like that. Maybe he did write words. I don't know. But now he wants every copy of GTA five that's unsold destroyed because they stole his music. I hate to tell you, dude, but it's not your music. It's not your music at all. It's the record label. You're just a producer. You were hired by the record company to produce this song, work with the artist, get it, you know, get it produced, put together and out. If Rockstar came to you and said, Hey, we want to give you 4,000 some dollars or $5,000 for, these two songs to use in our game and you said no 
Okay, well, they're just going to go to the record label. I guarantee the record label is the one who sold these songs because Rockstar would not risk putting these songs in here and not paying for them because that would just be wrong. I mean, why would they steal the songs? I mean, there's so many songs that they license and there's so much that they go through for the soundtrack that I don't think that they would just steal this guy's songs. I'm guessing is that the record label got the money. He wants more because he thinks that, oh, these are the best grandioso songs ever. And he thinks he's some big shot producer. I've never heard of him. And now he's trying to make his 15 minutes of fame. I guarantee Rockstar has covered their tracks. I haven't seen any update to the story. But here was the weird part is this story got posted on TMZ. Is TMZ so bored that they have to look at video game news now? Like, hey, that's us. Leave it to us. TMZ's got like, you know, celebrities and things like that. Uh, But I, I, like I said, this guy, I think, has no right to this music at all. And the record label is probably dealt with Rockstar. They've probably gotten it all in together and everything like that. So I think this guy is just trying to get his 15 minutes of fame because he's one, either a really crappy producer. I mean, I don't remember these two songs uh, in the game. Uh, I'm not a big rap fan. Maybe I'm wrong. If I am, you know, you guys can correct me. Um, but I'm, I, I think the record label and Rockstar took care of this. So I think he's just like, well, my songs are in there and nobody knows who he is. So he's just like, Hey, I did those songs and, now he's making a big stink about it. And it's like, dude, no one cares. Okay. Sorry to tell you. Nobody cares. But uh, a lot of people don't realize how much it actually takes to get songs licensed. Um, even for internet broadcasting like us, podcasters, if you play any music that is copyrighted by a record label or anybody, you have to pay the rights to that. And they're normally very expensive. Uh, depending on how big of an artist, like if you go after like, you know, Metallica or something like that, you're obviously going to be paying hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars to use their song in something. Uh, now, if you're an indie artist, some indie artist, um, I used to be a part of a, a group that uh, it, it was a, it was a service basically that you paid 300 bucks and they licensed any of your music to video games and things like that. Uh, a lot of indie artists are, are not signed professionals or anything like that, or just at home people, even though recording studios are getting so awesome, you know, for home use that you can put out a major release and put it in video games or movies and things like that. And so, you know, I mean, he, there, there's plenty of ways to get your music and stuff out there. This guy's just going about it the wrong way. I think, I mean, he's trying to get his 15 minutes of fame by blaming Rockstar for stealing his music guarantee 100%. I will bet you everything Rockstar took care of this with the record label. So he needs to move on and produce some more songs and nobody's really heard of. Anyways, speaking of Rockstar, you know, I gave you my impressions last week on the show. I'm also still a little sick, so I do apologize. Um, GTA Online was working okay at the time. I've actually got to play it more since the last time. I've actually, it's been up almost every time I get on, that I've been on, which is great. Uh, but for anyone who logs in for the month of October, you're going to get a little treat. And I can't wait for this. Starting next week, you can log in and Rockstar is going to give anyone who had trouble with the launch because it was so rocky and everything like that, everything like that, that they're going to give you $500,000. Okay. A lot of people are like, I don't want the $500,000. I want my character back. Well, okay, guys, listen, your character is gone. Absolutely gone. Nothing left. It doesn't exist. The ones and zeros are done. Nothing there. Okay, so just just, just move on. Most people have restarted new characters. I lost one of my characters. I'm okay with it. But, you know, I'm getting $500,000 for, you know, for free. Which, which everyone's like, oh, they're going to mess up the game. Now everyone's going to have you know, all the cool cars and all the, you know, the, the big apartments and all the weapons. And it's going to be unbalanced for the people who don't have that after October. I guess. Okay. What's the main purpose of Grand Theft Auto Online? Killing people. There's death matches. There's races, everything like that. Getting money is not that really hard. I mean, I've, I, the couple of hours I've played it, you know, for the past week. You know, I'm already up to like 50, you know, 50 grand. And all I did was some death matches, some races and really rob convenience stores. And 
I haven't got the sticky bombs yet because you can rob ATMs, like I said in last week's episode. And I really want to do that because I think there's going to be big money in that. But uh, and here's a tip. Please, like I said last time, put your money in the bank. Don't leave it in your wallet or on your character because you'll lose money really fast that way. Always put it in to your bank. You can use the app on the phone or go to an ATM and do it that way. But just use the app on the phone. Uh, but I think Rockstar giving us $500,000 is, I think it's kind of cool. I mean, we had, we were there, we basically beta tested the thing for them and they've worked out most of the bugs and everything is good. I mean, it, I haven't had any connection issues. It's been stable. It's been solid. Uh, I haven't had any of the missions freak out on me. They're fun. And this is the one thing too, is that they're really, really fun. I'm really surprised at just how well the mechanics of the game work. I did get ganked a couple of times and I will say this, and it was actually kind of funny. I know some people were just like, they hate that. They don't want to deal with that. I got in my car and the cool part about this, and I wish this was in the game. I think I may have said this. I'm not sure is you can put a tracker on your vehicle and it makes your, that car, your personal vehicle. So whenever you go back into the game or respawn from any of the missions or anything like that, that car is right there for you to get. And it's an icon on the map. And you have insurance, so if someone steals it, you can get one back. Or if it blows up, you can get one back. You pay, like, you know, a certain amount of money, and you get it back. I think that's really cool, and I kind of wish some of the things that are in the online were in the game, but I see why they didn't add safe houses. There's You get safe houses unlocked as you go, but on you can't buy them like you could in, like, San Andreas. So, but they, all of that is in, in the online version. I think that's really cool. So, I mean, that, that makes you want to play the online version. It gives you a goal to get to, like the biggest apartment, the coolest apartment, you know, plus you get garages, you can put all your custom cars in there. You can allow just your friends or your crew to get in there and you can do that for your car too. If you don't want your car jacked, leave it somewhere and set your car to only allow your crew or friends into it. And if someone comes by and tries to steal it or they come up to you and, and yank you out to like, you know, gank you, they can't do it. It won't open the car. I think that's kind of cool. You can also set yourself the passive, which means that no one can attack you. What's the fun in that? Um, I did have an, I did have a problem where I thought someone was a new player and I got out of my car and I got my shotgun out and I shot at him and he had like a mini gun or something and just mowed me down. It was the funniest thing. I mean, I think I laughed for like a good five minutes. So, I mean, it's just good fun. And Rockstar giving us $500,000, I'm okay with. Some people are like, no, I want to earn the money, you know, my way. I want to earn it my way. I want to do it right. I want to be lame and jump to the end. There's not an end. The thing is, the, the, the goal of the game is to play the missions and to kill people and to have your pad. And, of course, they haven't introduced heist yet. Now, you do have to have an apartment and I think a garage and everything like that, that your crew can come into and you can plan heists. They haven't put that into the game yet. And I'm really excited about that, but them giving us $500,000, it's that, nothing. That's does nothing. There's some people that have over that, by actually by now it, it's really, really insane. How much people have money now that we haven't been able to buy the, the money cards yet. That, hasn't come out they actually canceled that because of the issues they were uh, that they were having i know some people bought it and some people like hopefully they get refunded or the five hundred thousand dollars will cover that but i'm excited it starts next week and i'm looking forward to logging in and i don't know how i'm gonna get the 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 big apartment in the city i did read somewhere that there is a nice little house or or something over there by mount about like one of the mountain areas and there's a really really great view i think i'm going to buy that and then we'll get a 10 car garage in the city so i think that one either comes with 10 cars there i don't know it's just so cool i'm, I'm really excited about the five hundred thousand dollars i'm going to i'm going to use it and i'm going to buy cool stuff and it's going to make my experience for beta testing this basically for them hey it makes me feel better i don't know about you but it makes me feel better so i i, I think people need to just Accept it. It's not going to unbalance the game. Okay, the game is primarily about killing stuff. Okay, and if you're a new person, you're going to get ganked. Just deal with it. You know, just go go rob stores and build up your money. It's all I'm doing. I, I'm having a blast. So I, I don't know what people are are complaining about. Anyway, let's move on to the next story here. Now, 
we all know that me and Annie are both huge WoW players. And I have, I religiously played Diablo. I loved, I spent so many years in Diablo 2, it wasn't even funny. And then Diablo 3 came out. And I played it, and I beat Diablo. And then I kind of put it away, because I wasn't quite impressed with the auction house and everything that was with it. There was a lot of, to me, little things that needed to be changed to make the game what it what it was. Now, we all know that they're closing the auction house, which, thank God, you know, it'll, it'll stop on balancing the game. If it was me, I wish we could just wipe everything and start the game over, like everybody start over. But I guess it really doesn't matter at that point. You know, it's not like we're playing, you know, it's not like an MMO or anything like that. I am going to start all of my characters over. Uh, I am going to get the expansion pack. Some people were complaining about the price that they're going to charge you $30 for the Diablo three expansion pack. Weird thing about it is in the comments, people are like, well, Blizzard always charges you $30 for an expansion pack. Look at all the wow expansion packs. That's not true. All the wow expansion packs are 39 99. They're basically 40 bucks. This is $30. And a lot of people are complaining that it's going to feel like it's more of a DLC pack than an expansion pack. And I hope that's not it. And I really, really am excited for the Crusader. That, that, that's my class, man. I, I am totally going to rock that class. And I I don't think Blizzard would, do, would really do that. I mean, I, I, I love Blizzard. They do things wrong, trust me. And there, there are certain things I wish they'd fix. But I, I don't see them charging $30 for a DLC pack. I just, I just don't. Uh, I think this is, will be an expansion pack. It'll be a full-fledged expansion pack. And I think $30 is perfect. They do know that Diablo 3 is not as big and not the overall success of Diablo 2. And I, I think they realize that and they know that. So they're not going to charge $40 for the expansion pack. I mean, it's only one new act and you get one new playable character. I mean, it's not, it's a lot of content. Is it going to take you two or three days to beat it? Probably not. It'll probably take some people four or five hours to beat, which doesn't sound like a whole lot. I know. I know people are just like, oh, well, I want 50 plus more hours for my $30. It's 30 bucks. Okay. You get a new playable thing. They're taking the auction house down. There's going to be new drops, new rares, new epic things, and, you know, all kinds of new stuff to go through. I am truly excited about this, and I can't wait to get the expansion. I don't think thirty two dollars. I don't think thirty dollars is that much. They could have charged thirty nine ninety nine like they do any of the other expansion packs. We don't know exactly what's going to come with. I think it's called Reaper of Souls. I can't think off the top of my head. Uh, with a new Diablo three expansion pack, BlizzCon is coming up in November. Remember, we are going to be covering that live, so we will have all the developer panels that we think that people would want to do. Uh, the main thing we're going to focus on and we'll probably do live and will be one of the episodes is the basically the presentations, the 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 announcements and everything like that. That's really what we want to focus on. It's like the announcements for World of Warcraft, you know, Starcraft 2, Diablo 3, stuff like that. What's new, what's coming and the details of that. But I think 30 bucks is good. I mean, we'll probably learn more at BlizzCon of what actually we're getting. Uh, and if you get the virtual ticket. If you guys want to see, you watch, it's forty dollars, and you get all the coverage, and it's all in HD. You can watch it on your Xbox 360. I think you can watch it on it. Well, not all about the PlayStation. You can watch it on your computer and everything like that. And plus, you get really awesome, cool goodies for World of Warcraft, StarCraft II, and Diablo III. You get this big banner thing that says BlizzCon and everything like that for Diablo III, and then you get Mercs a lot, which is a Murloc that is like, he's like Lance a lot, and he's a Murloc. That is really cool. So we're going to have, you know, we'll, we'll cover everything that comes with it. Even in the episode, we'll even talk about the goodies that we get. And we'll show you what they look like. So BlizzCon, November 8th, 9th. I think it's the whole weekend. I think it's November 8th and 9th or November 8th, 9th and 10th. So, and we'll be covering it. $30 for the expansion pack, I, I feel is, is, is fine. They could have charged more, but it really depends on what we're getting. We're only getting one new act, one playable thing. Hey, 30 bucks is fine. I think that's cool. All right, so let's move on real quickly. Uh, we've been covering the Steam Box and the Steam OS and the controller and everything like that. And I've given you my thoughts. I'm not so sold on the controller. The OS is a cool idea. 
the steam box is an okay idea but, but it, the stream it's the whole streaming thing that i don't like i don't like the fact that you have to log into your computer log into steam pick your game walk over to your tv that's in the living room sync them up and then stream the game over there you can either use a mouse or keyboard i, I just feel there's going to be lag even though it's on your network now most in-home networks are a gigabit network it could be flawless i know I, I, I'm going to test this out. The Steam OS, I think, is a cool idea in itself. But as far as the Steam box with the specs, I mean, this thing's not going to be cheap. You, but I think people are going to build their own mini computers because there's there's all kinds of like AMD APUs out there that are so powerful that that'll, that'll power any of this stuff, put Steam OS on it, and then put it in their living room and do it that way. I think the Steam box itself is going to be for those people who are just got money to burn and it's like, want to buy this you know extremely expensive box to do this but i already have a computer and i've said this before i already have a computer and i'm just gonna play steam on that now the steam controller looks like a face well, i think we called it darth vader's puppy uh and it, it looks uncomfortable i mean i haven't got my hands on it yet uh we'll definitely try to get a uh controller maybe a steam box to test on the show and everything like that but i came across this video and i really wish they would have gave me a 720p version of this video but it's a demo of portal 2 and civilization 5 using the steam controller it's not the prettiest controller either but i think these are just prototypes uh but he they talk about like the mapping of the different zones and uh, i'm a tactile man i want tactile but these are basically like fancy track pads and you can zone off like almost like a pie like four different things and four different actions and you can do basically assign like your wasd keys left or right strafe you know strafe stuff like that it, it, it's really kind of cool the way it works but i'm i've played with first person shooters and controllers and stuff like that and i absolutely horrible uh, I know there's aim assist, but people don't like using aim assist or anything like that. Or they think you're a noob if you do. Uh, this could be cool if it works the way they demo it. But I, th but if you're not like me, I'm mouse keyboard dude all the way. But I think with this, if it works the way it's demoed, I'm going to show you the video here in just a minute. That's about four or five minutes long. And then we'll talk about it after that. About after that. Uh, it could be cool. It could be game changing. I don't know. I haven't got my hands on it yet to, to try it. It does look like it may be kind of complicated to set up with the different zones and stuff like that. But here, we're going to watch the video. Then when we come back, we're going to talk more about it. Hi, this is Jeff Ballinghausen. I'm one of the engineers at Valve who's working on the controller project. Um, we wanted to put together a gameplay video that shows how the controller is used in a number of different types of games. So we have some first-person shooters, some strategy games, um, and some other just mouse pointer type games. Um, we're going to try and put together um, these updates pretty frequently. So if you have any questions about what you're seeing here, about any other types of games you'd like to see, um, go ahead and let us know in the comments. So the first game we're going to show you is Portal 2. Um, one of the most important features of the controller is that the two trackpads are fully configurable. What we're showing here is what we call legacy mode, which is playing a game that hasn't been modified at all to support the controller. So this is just standard keyboard and mouse style uh, Portal 2 but the controller is acting like a mouse and keyboard and um, is mapped to output keyboard events that Portal expects. Since the two trackpads can be configured independently, we use the right hand pad here to do a one-to-one -one view control mode. Um, it's important to distinguish between a, like a joystick, which does a relative or velocity-based movement, and this one-to-one -one mode where we can directly move your thumb a fixed amount of distance on the pad and the view will correspond with the fixed amount of distance. At the same time, the left pad is configured like a D-pad where it's divided up into pie-shaped segments where up and down is the W and S keys and left and right are the A and D keys. So you can walk around like you would with a, a walk joystick. You are not alone. All aperture science the next game we wanted to show you is Civilization V. Um, this is a great game for playing on the couch, but um, in the past it's been pretty difficult unless you wanted to prop a keyboard in your lap. So the way we have the controller bound for this game is on the left, the D-pad is set up to control the camera using the arrow keys, and the right pad is uh, a one-to-one -one mouse pointer.
The bottom buttons are bound to zoom in and zoom out. So along with the left pad arrow keys, it makes for a very fluid way to zoom around the map and zoom in and look at your unit. Here I'm using the grab button to just grab the train directly and push it around using the one-to-one -one mouse control. The next game we're showing here is uh, Valve's Counter-Strike Go. Um, this is a run through the training course to kind of show the precision capabilities of the trackpads. One of the neat things about the controller is that it allows you to play first-person shooters without any kind of auto-aim turned on. This next demo is a game called Papers, Please. It's a predominantly mouse-driven game, and so we can use both trackpads to control the mouse alternately. Um, the two mouse movements get blended together, so I can move with my left thumb and then my right thumb, and it allows you to do a really quick walk across the screen. It's a very comfortable way to control games that need to move the mouse very precisely and yet over large distances of the screen. All right, so as you see, they played Little Portal 2, Civ Five. And this one, Counter Strike Go, and it looks to me like it works great. Uh, they did mention that you don't have to have you know auto aim assist or anything like that with this controller. I, I just don't know if I buy that in a way. I, I think that I, I think it's going to be better than the traditional like analog controllers, but I, I think it's going to be a completely different experience. And I think it's going to feel completely different. And it's definitely something you'll have to get used to. But I'm still a mouse and keyboard guy. I mean, and he says, that, like, you know, it, it, it's very smooth. And you can move quickly across the screen and everything like that. I, I just feel like I'm still going to run into the same limitations as the standard controller on, on any of the game consoles. Some people are amazing with game controllers and just can pop off headshots left and right. Kudos to you. I can't do that. And if this can somehow give me a mouse experience and not a controller experience, that would be totally awesome. And I would probably buy this in a second. I don't think it's going to do that, though, unless you sit down and you can and you just use it constantly and you get really good with it. But I've been playing consoles since, you know, since Nintendo in 1985 uh, first person shooters on consoles, you know, with Xbox, PS2. I've been doing it for a while and I'm still not even good at it. Grand Theft Auto 5 is probably the first game I've gotten actually fairly good with the controller, but guess what? It's because it has aim assist. All I do is, I, as long as I'm sort of in the range of it, it'll lock onto them and I can blow them away, which, hey, call me a noob. Don't care. I don't care. I'm playing the game to have fun. I don't care about my score. I, I mean, some people do. I'm just playing the game to have fun. Uh, now, if it was Halo or Counter-Strike Go or, or Counter-Strike or something like that on a console, I either end up looking at the sky or looking at the ground. And if this fixes that, then holy crap, hey, maybe PC gamers will just love this controller so much and that they will buy it and everybody will be happy. But I still feel mouse and keyboard are number one. In my book and all the console people are going to hate me now because i said that uh pc is definitely my choice of gaming uncertain on, on everything else now when games like platform games like uncharted or grand theft auto 5 grand theft auto 5 is a little little in the middle i really would rather still have a pc version of grand theft auto 5 which we have rumors is coming so people mark it down first quarter 2014 very very big rumors about Grand Theft Auto 5 coming to PC then, which I'm excited about. I will buy again, but there are certain games I buy a console for. 
and there's certain games that I buy on handhelds. But my majority of all of my gaming, as far as first-person shooters, MMOs, even hack and slashes, I haven't got to play Diablo 3 on a console yet. And everyone says it's actually better on console. Don't know. I will judge that for myself and let you guys know. I am still a mouse and keyboard guy. And majority of my con- gaming is going to be on the computer. I love PC gaming, and it's, to me, superior. But that's just me. I do love my consoles, though. Anyways, let's wrap this thing up before. This episode's going to be a little shorter. Like I said, Annie's not here. She will be back next episode in all of her glory and her 35 minutes of doing makeup. Just saying. So before we go, remember November 8th, 9th, 10th, whatever the days are for BlizzCon, it's on the calendar. Go to gamertech.tv, look at the calendar, sync it with your Android device or whatever thing you have, sync the calendar, get our live updates, follow us on social media. I'm going to throw up the links here on the screen. Facebook.com slash gamertech TV, Twitter.com slash gamertech live, G plus dot two slash gamertech TV, and of course YouTube.com slash gamertech live. You can find all of our videos there. Plus, we're on Daily Motion. If you go to dailymotion.com slash gamertech TV, you will find us there as well. Um, let's see what else I want to uh, mention real quick. So, yep, Annie will be back next week. BlizzCon. I don't know if we're going to be doing the iPad event where we're, we're going to take a look and see if we're going to cover it i think it's on october 22nd if we do follow us on twitter and facebook because if we do you will know you will know if it's coming because you follow us on social media all right i want to thank personas for sponsoring this week's episode we may have some new sponsors coming up soon so make sure to check out all the other episodes go to the website gamertech.tv because we're gonna have some cool stuff coming up in the next uh, couple episodes we'll run like a pvia raid max logitech you don't want to miss any of those so hopefully i didn't bore you too much i normally this is the first time i've done one solo in so long if it's horrible i do apologize but please come back for next week's episode it'll be normal it'll be the way everyone loves it and big thanks to anyone who nominates us for the podcast awards we've gotten a couple of them i don't think we qualify because we haven't had 10 episodes um that was one of the rules i think so but hey it was just nice to get people to say hey we love this show and thank you to all of the people who support us and everything like that all right until next week when any comes back and everything goes back to normal you know what you should go do you should go play more games see you next week (laughs) 